Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Jill and here. If you don't know me, this is me. <laughs> um, also, yeah, this is my channel. I do makeup, I do vlogs. Um, I pretty much put on what I can in the form of content, of course. So if you're interested, stick around, subscribe. Today we are doing a full glam makeup look. We are going to be beat, so we're going to look like... We are going somewhere. We're gonna look like we have serious people to speak to. We're gonna just look ship's kiss and we're gonna play in some different makeup makeup that I haven't used on my channel before. And yeah, it's not really about the products, more so about the techniques and what we're actually trying to do on the face. I think it's gonna be a really chilled video. We're obviously gonna be beat to the gods. Um, but yeah, if you're really just here because you love makeup and you also just want to get an example of a full clam look, a full clam inspo, then you are at the right place. I actually haven't done a makeup tutorial on YouTube, like tutorial as in we're speaking about what we're doing, the technique, why we're doing it in a minute, so I'm excited to do it because I feel like we've been so into the get ready with me culture and I have definitely enjoyed it. It's nice sometimes to just speak about the product and not necessarily be teaching the makeup so that's what we are doing today so everything i'm using will be listed below just to save time on this video so we can really focus so i'm gonna start by carving out my brows because that's how i do my face now i just gel down my brows and i carve them out and then i do my face and eye makeup and then once I'm done with that, then I only fill them in. I find it a lot easier because brows can be so tricky and you can spend so much time obsessing over them. Whereas it's like, it's okay. And I feel like because you go through a process of fixing them over and over while you're doing the rest of your face, just end up with them. Literally just cut them out, leave them and do all your perfecting and all that at the very end when everything else is done and no other product will get into the brows and affect how they look. So I've just blended out the concealer that I applied on my eyelids and I'm gonna sit with a very light layer of powder just so that it doesn't easily crease and sometimes sitting with powder helps grab the shadow but also when it's tacky it also helps grab the shadow so whatever your preference is it really really works there is no one way to do makeup you know I was using natural lighting but now it seems a little bit dark but let's continue with this and then if needs be I'll add my artificial lighting so we're gonna start with eyeshadow and I'm thinking of going with a brown first and then we'll see how everything else goes actually let me Kind of start when I and see where I go. So this is what we have going for the first eye. And just a very cute, yeah, very cute. I really like that. I think I just need to blend a little more. So I pretty much used one palette for this look. I just I wanted to use this specific palette is this palette that I wanted to use there's honestly no need for me using that palette so even if you don't use the palette it's okay um yeah I'll just show you the shade so I'm starting with this brown that's it's a neutral brown but it's appearing a bit more red on me but yeah I'm just taking this in the crease slash here and I'm kind of just placing it not too much just a nice transition color this is really giving old school YouTube days old school makeup days like 2016 peak makeup so simple two seconds I place that and then I'm gonna take another brush and I'm gonna place this shade this shade and I'm just gonna place that on my 
uh, to a corner so this is the shade that I'm like it's not really necessary and I kind of brought it into the crease but like really really low into the crease and I'm blending it in with that um, first brown and then I'm gonna leave it as is and I'm gonna blend in that first shade with I'm using the ABH soft lamp palette I also feel like for people who had this back then so this is the first shade that I went in with I can't see it but it's the shade and this is the shade that I'm not gonna blend in with which is orange soda well the first shade was burnt orange so I'm gonna take orange soda and just fluff in between on top of burnt orange and on top of that so I always set my eyelid earlier so now orange soda is kind of gonna set whatever I didn't set here while also diffusing burnt orange even though burnt orange is pretty soft already and I'm gonna take another brush and mix in rustic and cypress umber these two darkest browns and this is what's essentially gonna replace what's going on here so I just wanted more brown to happen since I was gonna use more gold and I used that to even wing it out a bit so I know that we created pretty much a circular shape but now I'm gonna wing it out so I'm just gonna go back into burnt orange and diffuse this a little revive it a bit also I'd actually just set this part again with tempera and orange soda so I mixed the two because tempera is a bit too light and it's not a light vibe that I was going for I just wanted to set slash bring some lightness into that area and then I went in with that brush I used to blend my concealers and I just pretty much tapped over it because I still wanted to this area tacky enough for for my glitter and I'm gonna go back in and just diffuse here I just forgot to end it with orange soda now that that's all looking great I'm gonna go in with this pigment from MK Beauty and it's in the shade Clara. Got this from David Beauty Cosmetics on Instagram. So I just take some on this little concealer brush, something flat, and I just pack it on here. I start off on the lid, so I'm using as little and not going in with an overwhelming amount. I'm gonna bring it in way closer so you can really see the magic take place so that's a, a quick and simple look and I am done I don't know if you can see the glitter I think I'm gonna switch on my ring light at this point I've added some artificial lighting just so the video looks better so I hope that you like that please just excuse the noise that's going on in the background they are cleaning the garden so it's a bit noisy yeah so now I'm just applying foundation so, if you've been watching my channel as of late, I know I haven't posted many makeup videos this year, but the ones where I have posted, I've been using this method where I put a skin tint as my base, and then I go on top with a foundation, which is what I'm doing right now, and it's been making my base look so good, and dewy, and just, you know, I, you can either make it look dewy or you can make it look matte and good but you just look healthy your skin looks healthy 
I feel like it makes your makeup look so good and for glam is definitely about your skin looking good like you you need to put your back into the skin work so skin prep is what important yes your skin needs to be moisturized underneath your skin concerns need to be taken care of in terms of if you have oily skin you need to use moisturizers that don't contain a lot of oils if you have um if you have dry skin you make sure that you're adequately hydrated and your little is in the level obviously acne cannot be covered as in like it'll disappear the bumps and all will disappear from your face but as long as you treat your skin and your skin is healthy your makeup will look good oh and as i'm sure you saw around my mouth i was color correcting you don't need to color correct it's just that the color correcting shade that i use or the shade that i use to get rid of the darkness around my mouth is i don't have it right now so i just used a color correcting shade you don't have to if you don't need it some foundations are full coverage enough like this one is full coverage enough but i really feel like it makes my makeup look you know and then i'm gonna go in with my beauty sponge and tap in the excess I'm applying my contour and as you can see I'm applying it higher than where I naturally my natural contour is and this is so that when I blend I blend into where my natural contour actually is and I don't drag my face down because when you put it where it actually belongs and you're still to blend if you're applying and blending at the same time then sure you can start where your natural contour is but if you're only like applying like I am then it's important to first start off applying a bit higher so that you don't drag your face down and I do some jaw contouring honestly you can do this guys as long as you can blend I feel like people are always like stay away from this if you're a beginner you are and that's if you're afraid to learn so just do it and blend I think that's the important thing makeup is all about it's all about cohesion and things looking like they come from each other naturally so if you don't blend this out properly then and you can tell that okay you apply product here then of course it's gonna look bad but if you blend it out well enough, then it's gonna do its purpose, which is to sculpt, and you won't look splotchy, you'll still look good and achieve your purpose. I honestly enjoy contouring. I feel like I enjoy contour and bronzer equally although my contour shade is quite warm and remember contour is meant to sculpt and it's um, typically cool toned but it also depends on your undertone so remember I have um, warm undertone I am neutral but I lean towards the more I lean towards the more warm side and you can tell your undertone by your veins if your veins are more green then you are warm and if your veins are a bit blue like me here in my hand then you are cool but if you have both then you are neutral and the more green veins you have the more warm you are the less green veins you have the more cool you are so you can use that when trying to figure out your undertone and bang foundation or even just makeup shades and also to help you to make better decisions when picking colors that you put on your face so for example i'm putting more warm warmer tone eyeshadow colors because it's going to suit my skin tone better i totally digress but i was speaking about how i love contour and i love the cream contouring step or the liquid contouring step but i equally love applying powder bronzer i genuinely feel like it brings my whole look together if i don't do the one or the other i feel like it just doesn't look the same so when it comes to sculpting my face 
what I do in the cream or liquid, I will do in the powder form. So I've applied my blush. As you can see, I've applied an orange coral blush. That's what I'm gonna start off with. And then I have a darker blush, kind of like a burgundy. And that's what I'm applying higher up, just so, so it's more defined here in this area. If you genuinely like the lifted look, this is gonna look so much better. Or oh, this is gonna help you amplify that look so much when you apply a lighter blush on your cheeks and then a darker one higher up it creates that lifted effect or simply if you just apply your blush within like the c shape of your face here in this area like connecting your temples and your cheeks and remember what i said earlier about how if you blend well enough you move from the whole i'm a beginner in makeup to i do my makeup or i do makeup when you take your time in blending so always important to go back with your brushes that's why i like using different brushes for different steps so that i can go in with brushes from certain steps just to revive whatever i did before slash tie in the previous step with the current step so now i'm just tying in my blush and my contour because it really looks nice and seamless when you pack it in together i don't have a before and after because i've already mixed the two but it really looks nice this is my first concealer placement and i like blending it out with my foundation brush and then i'll go in with my beauty sponge and as you can see i'm tapping that in a way that by the time it gets here it's diffused and also i'm blending in a way that it cuts out my brows as you can see that looks really nice and in this area i use my sponge and i'll just go back in with my sponge and here remember i blended out my excess my excess foundation so i'm going to use it to blend on top of the highlight and the contour just so it flows nicely even here i'm going to blend out So here I'm just mixing in two concealers, a light one and my normal highlighting shade. I like contouring your nose, I like applying it in a way that, slash blending it in a way that I carve out my nose or I highlight my, not highlight my nose but like just isolate and create a sharp line. So you can really see your nose contour and have it be defined. So remember, if you want a smoothless blend, just look up. I'm actually gonna create like a, a line here. A line between my, for my eyeshadow. And then I'm gonna continue blending that. I'm gonna go back in with that side where I blended out my foundation and just tap in this area to blend out the line. Here you can take a brush if you haven't done your eyeshadow and you can just blend. And now I'm taking my setting powder. And pressing everywhere that I applied the concealer under my eye. My, my goal is always to set where you are naturally crease and then i follow up to set everywhere else that i highlighted so i set with my yardly transition powder under my eyes but now i'm just going to use my huda around my mouth 
simply because I want to use both powders and you know what, I can have the best of both worlds since I have the both. But these are two very good powders so regardless of which one you can afford, you can still get this look, especially the under eye. I feel like it's so easy to use a powder around the rest of your face but the under eye is so, so sensitive for me at least and I'm so particular that's why I don't mind spending a dime on setting powder. It's important to always press in the powder into your sponge and make sure it is even before you go in and set. You see that powder is even. And at this point I even put some powder on my brows. And I like actually going over my nose just like this after setting everything and then just going on top of it with my powder. So now I'm just pressing all that powder in before I go in with my face powder. I take my face powder and a big fluffy brush like this. I'm going to tap. I'm not gonna swirl, I'm not gonna swipe, it's just gonna create a disaster. And I go over wherever I put that translucent or Huda powder simply to get rid of the white cast. They say that the Yardley one doesn't change your, the color of your makeup, which is great, but you will still have some kind of cast. And this is how I get rid of it, always. And I also tap it here just to set this area. If you have dry skin, you don't need to do this step, but with this powder, it genuinely doesn't dry up my skin. So I'm comfortable enough doing this. The way that I apply it, it doesn't dry up my skin. It can escalate really quickly if you are not careful, but this method doesn't dry up my skin for me. And then a new trick that I've been using to get rid of my smile lines is taking my face powder on a fluffy brush or a dense brush and just packing it on there and just dusting over where my smile lines are up here. This just really really packs on the powder onto the area and it's skin tone so it doesn't show, it doesn't look like you used a lot of powder and this powder is so good you this powder is so good you don't even feel tight or anything like that around this area. I've applied so much powder but you can't see because it's a skin tone powder and honestly I've noticed that when I do this my smile lines are non-existent by the end of the day. They may be there but they'll be very very faint because of course it's something that's natural and you can't really get rid of but when they are not hectic you can definitely use this method and get away with having smile lines i'm just wearing this bib <laughs> for to cover my top because i'm wearing a white top so now we are done with the hard work with the most of the hard work now we do the fun stuff i'm using <laughs> this p louise palette bronzing palette, uh, it's the Rapid Up palette. This is such a nice palette. I tried it the other day, it looked too good. Well, actually, this shade on its own is quite dark. I think depending on the type of look you're going for, you can um, go darker or lighter to create the perfect bronze. As you can see, it's really done its job and it looks pretty good. To so warm it up a little. Even though I usually do my bronzer with my face powder, just to add some redness, I believe. 
and then little warmth and that one that I contoured most of my face with or bronze most of my face with I'm adding it here I was covering myself for blush I wanted to use this Mac Raisin one and some of that uh, some of um, the P. Louise one I'm gonna start off with the Mac one and remember I said I want to kind of lift my face and have a darker blush here and that's what I did with my pink blush so I'm gonna add the matte blush there first wrap it up blush palette I'm gonna use this one I'm gonna try this one out still quite high up on my face that's why I'm gonna apply it that's really pigmented and that was like three tabs I think it's quite similar to the MAC one it's just lighter if you get me but this looks beautiful up range and as you can see these are beautiful shifting shimmers so I'm gonna take the first one the gold one just cuz it's the best for my skin tone and I'm gonna apply it my inner corner and I think I'm gonna kind of blend it into my eyelid that's cute and now I'm just gonna add it on my nose add it to my cupid's bow and if you'd like and it's really your vibe you can add it on your cheeks I'm gonna just lightly because I'm not really a highlight on the cheeks girl anymore and you can do the c-shape motion just for when light hits your face And if you have texture, you can just apply it really focused, like at a point like this, so that it's only at certain angles that you can see it and it's not overwhelming and emphasizing your texture. So that's the face. Just gonna spray some setting spray. And always I will go in with my PT sponge and tap all the product in. Off the spring. That looks good. Let's go keep the under eye.
don't have lash extensions, you can tight line or you can draw on your lash line. This is such a beautiful look and nothing says full glam like eyeshadow, really full coverage, makeup, bronzer, blush, contour, highlight. And as much as my highlight isn't dramatic, I like me a full glam but I still like... I think there's a time and a place and I think because today I don't necessarily have an occasion. I don't have an occasion. I didn't have an occasion and I was just filming. I just wanted something that's a little bit more wearable for people who aren't really full glam girlies but want to get into being full glam girlies. I think this is not too bad for the starter pack. Even if you start off with this type of base makeup and you do the smokiness of the eyes and you leave the glitter out, then that's fine, that's a start. So you like a matte lip, you can switch it up and do a matte lip. But I feel like this is so, so, so stunning. And this is full glam, like this works for being a party guest, this works for, um, it works for bridal makeup if you are a bride doing your own makeup or even inspo or if it's like graduation, it's grad season so if you want to get some, or if you want to show this to your makeup artist or even if you're doing your makeup yourself, I feel like this is such beautiful makeup, it's classic but still really 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 stunning and i feel like it just accentuates features in a beautiful way i feel like this nicely highlights my big eyes you know and i, I also have quite chubby cheeks so i feel like at the same time it also gets to pay attention to my cheeks as you should <laughs> you know and my lips i really like my lips and my lips are cute um yeah so i feel like this really complemented me well and as you can see everything ties so beautifully in together the merry between the bronzer and the blush the merry between the shadow colors the merry between the nose contour and the start of the eyebrows i really feel like take your time with makeup and this is the result you'll get and often people feel like full glam isn't nice because it's just so stock and everything and to be quite honest the girlies weren't blending as much back then 2016 makeup was beautiful it just needed a little more blending they didn't wear as much blush so that blush and highlights that contour and highlight demarcation is what made you feel like scary so now i feel like it's so much more elevated and it's just such a stunning look man let's let's put on eyeshadow guys let's put on some makeup let's not be afraid as i said my ends for 2024 are definitely wearing more makeup and wearing more eyeshadow and i really feel like this is stunning this is truly stunning i love this i absolutely love this if you like this video do give it a thumbs up i am so excited to have been filming for youtube i missed you guys i hope you missed me too and i do hope that you liked the longer form videos i don't think i said much in this tutorial 
simply because I was really just focusing on the makeup but I did drop a few tips here and there so I hope you can learn from those tips and you can just sit down and do your makeup with me and yeah mm. okay girl <laughs> Thank you to my new studies. Welcome, welcome. This is the channel. This is what we do here. Um, I hope you like it here. I hope you stick around. I hope you share. And I hope you learn something. Yes. Get into it. Get into it. Get into it. Okay. Okay. Okay.